How y'all doing today, guys? Uh, excited to be here. It's been a whirlwind since uh, the middle to the end of last week uh, to, uh, to to getting here on campus yesterday afternoon for, uh, in time for the team meeting. Uh, really excited for this opportunity. Uh, really excited to be back with Shane. Uh, when we stopped working together 20 years ago, we didn't think it would take this long to get back together. Uh, excited to be you know back back in what I really love, the SEC and, and a great university like South Carolina. So. With that being said, uh, take any questions y'all have. Michael Lennon has got the first one. <clears throat> hey, uh, Marcus, Michael Lennon from the state newspaper. Um, it, you were just talking about your relationship with Shane 20 years ago. I mean, what was that relationship like then? Who is he like then? Who are you like then? And how have you guys evolved since then now that you're back together? I was a little nutty, I'm sure, and I still am. And Shane's always been the same. You know, you could tell Shane... I uh, was built to be a head coach, you know, being around his dad. Uh, he always kept me under control and kept me out of trouble when we were GAs and, and made sure I was staying straight. Uh, the cool thing about Shane, I think, is he's probably gotten me three jobs in my lifetime. Like, ever since we worked together, he's made calls and reached out to people to help my career. And, uh, you know, one thing I've always said about Shane is, is how hard he works. And sometimes, you know, having the last name like Beamer opens doors for him, and I think he works really, really hard to prove that he's gotten everything he's gotten, not because his last name is Beamer, but because he's a really good football coach, steady football coach that works his, his butt off at everything that he does. So I'm glad that he's gotten this opportunity and we get to do it together. Dick Cox. Coach, I'm Dick Cox with Lindy Sports and Cox Sports Broadcasting. What is the most important thing you want people to know about you? Uh, the... I'm going to bring a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy. I'm going to invest in the kids. Uh, you know, this I got to coach offensive line last year in Carolina, so that I've coached every position on the field, on offense. I think that so I bring a lot of flexibility from that standpoint. But I, I want I want people to know uh, that we're going to play an exciting brand of football. Uh, that we're going to have a lot of energy. Uh, the, the the kids when they come on campus and see our offensive staff and how our offense. Uh, puts what brand we put out there, and they see us practice when they do when they can come get on campus again. Uh, it's going to be something that they're going to want to be a part of. And I think, um, you know, first, last, and foremost is just the fact of, of how much I'm going to put into this and make sure that you know University of South Carolina Gamecock fans are going to be proud of the product that's on the field. Mike Yuba. Hey Marcus, Mike Yuba from Watch Fox Sports. Uh, can you kind of explain this process in terms of talking with Shane? Because obviously you guys have a history, and I think some people, they see the hire on Wednesday night. Um, can you kind of explain kind of like what was going on in terms of the last couple of weeks and when Shane actually first reached out to you? Because it seems like it wasn't just on that day to hire you, hire you as the offensive coordinator. Uh, we talked a couple times. You know, when he got the job, I was really excited for him. And, uh, you know, I was, I, was, I was perfectly content in the NFL doing what I was doing. And I, and I was telling him, like, you know, I'm not calling you for a job. I'm just calling to congratulate you. Uh, we talked a couple other times just about staff, people he was thinking about hiring. Did I know them? You know, what would be a good direction for him to go in? Uh, and then it, we just kept talking and kept talking. And, you know, certain situations, you know, happened uh, where a couple guys left. And it opened a door for... Uh, me to come in here where I am today and I think it's just you know I was a guy that he trusted and knew I could do the job and it really was not even I don't even think it was planned it just kind of happened through conversations over the last couple of weeks but there were never conversations like hey Shane you should hire me as your coordinator it was just uh, just one of those things timing happens for a reason and I'm here. Colin Taylor. Colin Taylor from Rivals.com. I guess you've obviously learned under Matt Rule and, and Joe Brady and, and Shane's learned from Lincoln Riley a little bit too. I just, can you kind of talk to me about what this brand of football, this offensive brand of football you're hoping to play will look like and how much will emerge your background and, and, and Shane's? Yeah, that's, you know, a lot of people come into these things with these grandiose statements of a pro style offense or an RPO offense or a triple option offense. I think we're just going to be a really good offense. I think, we're going to blend, you know, what Shane did at Oklahoma, what I've done my entire life, what I've learned from Joe Brady, and we're going to we're going to you know try to maximize our personnel. And the cool thing about our offense is we can move people all over the field, and whatever wherever we can get people to create mismatches, which is what Joe, I learned a lot from him this year, just being able to get in different formations and, and getting a guy with a certain skill set lined up on another defender that gives us a mismatch and utilizing him. So. 
the main focus of our offense is, you know, to create explosive plays, score touchdowns in the red zone, win the situations, and then first and foremost, don't beat yourself and play clean football and take care of the football. So um, it'll be a brand that, again, I, I don't think you can put a label on it because you know, it depends on the personnel you have. Like maybe certain personnel allows you to be more RPO driven and spread and, and quarterback run. And then there's other personnel that allow you to be more pro style, empty formations, uh, progression passing game. So we're going to do you know whatever our guys can do. I haven't even, you know, I met our guys one time last night. I haven't even got to get on the field and coach them or meet with them yet, but we're going to do and maximize what our guys can do. Pete Acabelli. Uh, hey, Marcus, this is Pete Iacobelli. I'm with the Associated Press here in uh, South Carolina. Uh, welcome. Do you um, uh, you talk about the players and you haven't had a chance to meet them or coach them yet? As far as the quarterbacks go, there don't seem to be a lot of options in that room yet. Do you What do you expect out of your quarterbacks, and how do you see that, uh, that, that group evolving a, as you get deeper into this job? Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's amazing with Luke. When I was at Baylor, uh, we were evaluating quarterbacks, and uh, it's 2018, and he was still in high school. And I remember reaching out to him on Twitter and messaging him on Twitter when I was at Baylor to come full circle now. And I'm at a team meeting, and I'm talking to him. And I was like, I don't know if you remember, but I was actually messaging you on Twitter. And, and that, was, that was kind of a cool little deal. But between him and Colton and Connor, I think that we got three guys in there that at least – uh, can start the competition. You know, everything that we do offensively is going to be revolving around competition. So there's a room that guys are going to be able to come in and compete and try to earn the starting job. I, I really like what I've heard so far about Luke, uh, his leadership skills, his uh, competitive spirit, uh, his ability to do a bunch of different things. Uh, really excited about Colton. Got to meet him last night. He's, you know, he's been here for a week. And so, you know, this is all new for him as well. Uh, I think, you know, they all give us a chance to, to do some things on offense and, We'll start from there. You got to have a starting point, and that's what we've got. And we're really excited about it. Hill McGrenner. Hey, I'm Hill McGrenner with the South Carolina 24 7 site, bigspur.com. I, I'm just curious how familiar you are with some of the other offensive personnel. Have, have you been able to watch much film or tape on any of those? Fire, guys? Yeah, I don't like to say a lot of names, especially when I need to look down to make sure I'm saying the right names. But I, I can just tell you right now, Really excited about the backfield, about our halfbacks, uh, our running backs. I think we can have a lot of productivity there. Of guys that, that played last year and guys that are coming off injury, I think that we're going to have a chance to be dynamic. I uh, really like our guys up front. I think, you know, we have a chance to be, you know, top tier from an offensive line standpoint. I think that, you know, we've got some toughness, some athleticism. Uh, got some potential to have some depth there. I'm really excited about that unit. And then, Got really good tight ends coming back. They'll allow us, if you're going to throw the ball down the field, you got to be able to utilize the middle of the field, which uh, Shane would tell you that, coaching tight ends at, you know, at Oklahoma in the last couple of years. And I think we got some guys uh, with some physical traits and athletic ability to stretch the interior part of the field. So I'm really, I'm really excited about all those groups uh, you know, moving, moving forward into spring. Phil Cornblut. There we go. Hey, Coach, uh, it's Phil Cornblute, Sports Talk Media Network here in South Carolina, and welcome to Palmetto State. You actually beat Shane to the head coaching room with your two years at Tennessee Tech. From your experiences there, um, what can you share with him about the the, <clears throat> the ups and downs of of the job and and over and overseeing a program like you uh, like you did for two years? Uh, just, I think Shane's on point already. Like, uh, you can't be emotional. You can't make decisions on emotion. Uh, you know, invest in your players. Uh, make sure that, that they know that you love them and you care about them and you're there for them. Uh, consistently lay out a standard of performance and live up to that every day. Again, I don't think there's really much I can give Shane that he, that he doesn't already know or hasn't learned from the guys he's worked for or watching his dad as he's growing up. But uh, I think he's, he's well equipped. But... You know, there are certain things behind doors that the head coach's decisions you have to make. And I think I'm a guy that I'm not afraid to give an opinion or make a decision that he can lean on if he has questions or uh, wants, you know, wants any help with anything or any matters. Josh Kendall. Hey, Marcus, Josh Kendall with The Athletic. How are you? When you hear the term complimentary football in terms of 
how the pace that you use specifically affects the defense. What does it mean to you? And do you have any discussion like that with Shane or with Clayton yet? Uh, I, I was going to go to that route. I think complementary football is uh, you have to, you have to, I mean, again, play both sides, kicking game, defense, and offense. I think that you have to be careful. If you are going to use tempo, you better, you know, you better get a first down or two. If you go out there and go three and out, like we all know, you're putting your defense at a great adv- disadvantage. So we have to be smart. I think one of the things that, that Oklahoma, you know, everybody thinks they go fast all the time. They really are not that fast. I mean, when you watch them, they're very deliberate in the run game. They're very deliberate in their play style. And then all of a sudden, they'll mix some tempos, some, you know, some spontaneous plays on you. And that's one of the things that we did at Carolina this year. I mean, we would huddle up. Uh, we would play at a good tempo. And then we'd get a first down. And then we'd to- throw two or three plays uh, with some tempo in it, get another first down. So I think, you know, I don't know many teams. I mean, you've got to be a special mindset to go fast as you can all the time. I don't see us doing that. But I think any time that you can mix and change tempos throughout the game is a huge advantage for you. And then, like you said, you got to make sure that you're staying on the field, getting first downs, and, and helping out your defense. Scott Eisberg. Hey, Scott Eisberg down at uh, Channel 4 in Charleston. Just kind of doing my research on you. Uh, talked to Jeff Bleemer last night who said, how does a guy who played wide receiver in the SOCON end up coaching offensive line in the Carolina Panthers in the NFL? Uh, but, but I guess that uh, the kind of question is, how does that happen, and how much has that prepared you to kind of run the gamut of positions uh, to coach in offense and call plays on an offense in the SEC? Uh, it's been unbelievable. I've coached every position uh, on offense. Uh, I was a tight end coach at Baylor. I've always had, uh, you know, coaching quarterbacks most of my life, the protections aspect of it. I mean, you're having to coach uh, the whole gamut of the offense, and I've always been interested and always wanted to have a chance to coach O-line one day, and luckily Coach Rule thought, you know, in the NFL, it's set up. You have an O-line coach, and then you have an assistant O-line coach. And usually the assistant O-line coach, like back in the old days, you had a tackles, tight ends, and, a, and an O-line guy. So it, it allowed me to go in and learn from Pat Meyer, which is a great offensive line coach, uh, be hands-on with a lot of really good, talented players, uh, including my man Dennis Daly, who played here a couple years ago, and get to coach them on the field. And I think just the meetings, uh, all the things I learned that in 20 years of coaching I'd never even thought of before, just how it has really progressed me. I mean, light years from where I was just a year ago as an offensive coordinator is, is going to be a tool that I can use. I mean, there's, there's not a position group on the field that I could not coach, and I, I'm not at least somewhat of an expert on, on each one of them. So I think it'll, it'll be good for everyone just to, to have a guy like me that can – uh, you know, not help them out, but they can ask questions. And I can, I think the main thing is a lot of coordinators that have never coached offensive line don't understand the strength, you know, the strains on an offensive line and may ask them to do things that aren't possible at times. I'm never going to put a position group in a position where they can't have success or have a chance to have success. And I think knowing the ins and outs of offensive line play now is going to allow me to be a lot more friendly to those guys, play friendly anyway. And I think that'll, that'll you know, allow us to have some, you know, more success faster. Colin Taylor. I guess just first of all, kind of how excited are you to get back into maybe the recruiting world now that you've been out of it for a little bit? And when you are on the recruiting show, what are some things that you're looking for from quarterbacks when you do scout them and talk to them? The recruiting world and the press conference world is totally different since the last time I was in college. This is nuts that I'm looking at you all on the screen. It's kind of weird getting you trying to get used to it. Uh, the recruiting world as well, as, as well, just guys, that, you know, they can't come on campus. We can't get out on the road. It's a bunch of Zoom meetings, phone calls, text messages. Uh, so it's, it's totally different. But is it, it is exi- exciting to get back out and create these, these new relationships with the coaches and the players. Uh, as far as what we're looking for for quarterbacks is just, you know, you, you want a guy that can communicate, that's competitive. Uh, you want a guy that, that has leadership skills, both, you know, both through his work ethic and, you know, to be able to be a leader. By, by, you know, vocally calling out guys and making sure guys are doing things the right way. Uh, and then, you know, the intangibles, we would love to have Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and those guys, but a lot of times some of the best quarterbacks are, you know, six foot. Like there's one down the hall, Connor, who is one of my favorite college quarterbacks of all time. You know, he's not six four, so sometimes you have to maybe go against what you wish for and find that guy that has those certain intangibles, leadership, competitive intangibles that can get the job done for you and toughness get the job done for you. Let's go back to Michael Lanana. 
Hey, Marcus, um, you know, in recent years, it seems like the college game has had a lot of influence on NFL offenses, just in, you know, the RPOs, air raid and motion and jet sweeps and all of that. And I'm just curious uh, for someone who's been on both sides of it. I mean, what that exchange of ideas is like between both and what you might be able to bring from the NFL to a college off offense now that you're in this role. It's amazing how the NFL has really studies the college game and try to utilize this especially the jet sweeps and all the different motions in the run game. I mean, I can't tell you how many hours of, of the Oklahoma film <laughs> that we watched in the, in the off season. Uh, and then what, what you can bring to the NFL is just, again, just uh, learning from Joe, just, you know, getting at certain formations that, that allow the quarterback to gather information, like we're information gathers, like you have to play that position. And there's so much stuff that happens after the ball is snapped. If we can give them the information they need before the ball snap, how much better are they going to be able to, you know, to play and, and be productive? And that's what we're going to try to do. And I think I've learned a lot of things from him. It's going to allow, to, you know, allow the quarterback to gather way more information uh, than he's used to. Dick Cox. Coach Beamer has put together a good, young, energetic, offensive-minded staff. Did you know any of these guys in advance? And, you know, what's your thoughts of the guys you're going to be working with? Well, whenever he hired uh, Justin Stepp, I texted him. I said, Justin Stepp, home run hire. And he was like, man, thanks for saying that. Because I've, I've really been at Baylor and Justin been at Arkansas and SMU. Uh, you see the job he does recruiting. You see the culture he builds in his rooms. Uh, you see the, the production he gets in, in, in his room. So I think Justin Stepp is a young up and coming star in this profession and uh, excited that he's, you know, that I'm working with him finally. Uh, Dez, yeah, I, I actually coached to get him my second year, first year, excuse me, coaching at Chattanooga as uh, whatever coach I was at that point. Dez was, uh, Kitchens was, was playing receiver for Furman. So I was, you know, giving him a hard time. He put it on us that day. So I'm really fired up. Great offensive mind, former offensive coordinator. He's called plays. Uh, again, somebody that I can really lean on in the room for game planning, philosophy. So I'm really excited about Dez. And, and Kimry's just is unbelievable. I just met him for the first time last night. And he is what we would say, OOU, one of us. Like, I'm excited to get to know him. Uh, you know, again, he brings knowledge of a lot of positions as well, being, you know, such a successful high school coach. I think he can coach everything on offense, uh, you know. At a, at a high level. So I'm really excited to get to know him. Uh, you know, we got to hire an offensive line coach and, you know, hopefully we're getting close on that. We're going to bring in a guy that can, you know, execute our philosophy of toughness and competitiveness. And so I'm just, I'm fired up, man. It's a great, so we've been together all morning for the, this, this was the first morning we've been together. So I'm really fired up that, that I uh, got a chance to work with these guys. It's a great staff. And the one thing I would say is just, is it's a bunch of guys that have something to prove too. It's not, you know, some retreads that got fired from an NFL team or a former, you know, offensive coordinator that is at the tail end of his career. We're a bunch of guys that I think they are really smart. I try like heck to keep up with them, but have something, a chip on their shoulder and ready to prove to people that, that we can do some special things here. Hale McGranahan. Yeah, kind of going back to the, topic of quarterback recruiting how challenging is it going to be to evaluate guys in the portal if that's a route y'all choose to take when 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 adding to the position how, how difficult will it be to evaluate some of those things like you're talking about a second ago you're going to have to rely on trust and relationships uh because you're not going to be able to go out and see them throw uh so it, you, you've got to you got to find guys that you know that have seen them throw that you trust evaluate the tape uh get on the phone with these guys uh you know take them through a psychological test uh, of, of what you're looking for as far as communication and do you vibe with this guy? Does he have a personality that you want? Does he challenge him a little bit on the phone, see if he you know, barks back a little bit? Is he competitive? But the, the physical traits, you got to rely on the film and trust your eyes on the film. And then anybody that you've ever met before that knows what they're talking about, hopefully they've seen them and they can report back to you about you know, at some camp I worked two years ago. I saw the kid do this and he's special. And he's special. So. You know, there's a lot of trust, a lot, a lot of trust, you know, if, if you're going that route. Haley, you have a follow-up? Yeah, I wasn't sure uh, if I needed to put my hand up. <laughs> but uh, with with your background, learning from, from previous coaches, uh, who, who are some of the guys that you would say are, have been some of your biggest influences in, in offensive coaching and 
philosophy and all the, the biggest influencer is Matt Rule. I mean, that, that's he he has invested in my in my career early on. I, I was with him in 2013 at Temple. Actually, I was with him in 2005 at Western Carolina. Me and him and Clayton White were all on the same staff with uh, Jeff Collins, who's the head coach at Georgia Tech, and Brent Key, who was the offensive line coach at Georgia Tech. So we had a nice little staff there at Western Carolina. But Matt invested in me in 2013 as his offensive coordinator at Temple. And to watch what he's done at Temple when we win one game, six games, and then won 10 games back to back to what we did at Baylor where we won two games and we won six games, missed a bowl, which is impossible to do. And then to, to go on and play in the Big 12 championship where we lost three games that year and Shane beat me two of the three games. So beat us in the regular season, the Big 12 championship to go to the Carolina Panthers and you know making strides there. So just watching him, how he how he invests in his guys and how 24-7 he's there for them. They, the players know he's there for them. I think that's something that I'll always take with me. Uh, I think that, you know, being with Joe was a really good experience. Like it's, I tell him all the time, it's kind of hard to say I have a mentor that's 31 years old, but it's it was really cool to, to hang out and watch him work and watch him do his thing. Very, very influential, uh, you know, part of, of my growth as an offensive coordinator as Matt Rule is a growth of just overall coach and leadership skills and how you develop programs and turn around programs. Anything else for Coach Satterfield? See no more hands. All right. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, guys.